Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the Ten Virgins. Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people learn how to live a life that is pleasing to God. People loved not only the miracles Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. And Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that he wanted to change. Last week's parable, The Faithful Servant, is one of many parables that Jesus told on being ready to meet him when he returns to earth. Jesus warned that many of his followers would not be ready when he comes back. Many people put off doing things they know they need to take care of because they believe they still have plenty of time before Jesus returns. Now, Matthew recorded an extended sermon that Jesus preached on the signs that will appear before he returns at the end of the age. And after speaking to the crowds, Jesus turned to the disciples and said, Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Jesus made it clear that we are to be ready at any moment for his return. He said, Concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Mark 13 Verse 32. Now, many books have been written speculating about when Jesus will return. And many people believe that Jesus will return soon. And so it's good to be ready at all times to meet Jesus whenever he does come. But remember, he himself said, No one knows, not the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. In the light of this truth, Jesus said, be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know the time when he will come. Mark chapter 13, verse 33. After saying these things, Jesus shared that his return will be like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come and suddenly, and he finds you asleep. Mark chapter 13, verse 34 through 36. Now, Jesus has assigned to each of his followers spiritual work to do. And Jesus ended the parable by saying again, what I say to you I say to all, stay awake. Mark chapter 13 and verse 37. The lesson in this parable is not that the master was gone too long, but rather that the master returned sooner than was expected. The parable can be summarized by saying, Jesus is coming, ready or not. Now, after Jesus made his final visit to the temple courts, his disciples came up to him to show him the temple buildings. And Jesus responded to them by saying, Do you see all these things? I tell you the truth, not one stone will be left upon another. All will be torn down. Matthew 24, verse 1 and 2. The disciples were stunned by what Jesus said because beautification of the temple began 15 years before he was born. Work was still going on in the buildings as Jesus said these words. In fact, work on the temple would not be finished until more than 30 years after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. So how could Jesus say it would all be torn down? The disciples were greatly troubled by what he said. After leaving the temple, Jesus and the disciples crossed the Kidron Valley and went over to the Mount of Olives. And Matthew said, as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately and said, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. Naturally, they were curious to know when the things that Jesus had spoken about 
would happen. Now, while Jesus did not answer their first question about not one stone will be left upon another, it became clear that this statement was fulfilled in A.D. 70 when the Romans destroyed the temple. So Jesus ignored their first question, but he answered their second question. What will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? And Matthew recorded the lengthy teaching that Jesus gave on the signs of the end of the age. So here are some of the signs that Matthew recorded that Jesus said. These things will happen before he comes back. False Christs or false messiahs will appear. There will be wars and rumors of wars. Nations will rise against nation. Famine and earthquakes will happen in various places. Believers will be put to death and hated in all nations. Believers will fall away and betray one another. Many false prophets will arise. Lawlessness will increase. And the love of many will grow cold. We find all these things in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 through 13. Then Jesus said, the end is not yet. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Matthew 24 and verse 8. And Jesus finished his teaching by saying, the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Matthew 24 and verse 14. After finishing his sermon, Jesus told the parable of the ten virgins. And this is the second of four parables that Jesus taught to help people repair, prepare for his return. He said, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 and 2. The wise, or to be wise, means to be sensible, to have insight, to have wisdom. The Greek word for foolish is morose, from which we derive the English word moron, or to be stupid or to be unprepared, or to be foolish. It's living without a plan or preparation to face the unexpected circumstances of life. And Jesus said, For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. Matthew chapter 25, verse 4 and 3. The wise ones had prepared for the emergencies of life. Jesus said the bridegroom was delayed, and they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Matthew chapter 25, verse 5 and 6. Notice that all of the virgins became drowsy and slept. The problem was not sleeping. The problem was not having enough oil to prepare themselves to meet the groom when he did arrive. Jesus said, then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourself. Matthew chapter 25, verse 7 through 9. Tragically, while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Matthew chapter 25, verse 10. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, saying, Truly, I do not know you. Matthew chapter 25, verse 11 and 12. This parable contains some of the saddest words. Jesus ever said, your lamps are going out, the door is shut, and I do not know you. I pray that no one listening to this message ever hears these words from Jesus. And what are we to learn from this parable? There are some things that cannot be given or loaned. There are some things that cannot be obtained at the last minute. 
being spiritually prepared for the return of Jesus cannot be given away or shared at the last minute. I cannot give you the preparation I have made to meet Jesus when he comes. Each person is responsible for his or her own spiritual preparation to meet Jesus. Either we are spiritually ready for Jesus to come or we are not. Now in the Bible, oil is always a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit at all times. So when Jesus comes, you will be ready to meet him. If you are a follower of Jesus, but you know that you're not ready to meet him, do whatever you need to do right now to get ready. You have time. Forgive whoever you need to forgive. Change whatever Holy Spirit is convicting you to change. Ask Holy Spirit to come and fill you with his presence. Fill your mind and your heart with the things of God so that you'll be ready to meet Jesus when he comes. Now, Jesus ended the parable by saying, Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. The key word in the parable of the faithful servant is be awake. The key word in the parable of the ten virgins is be prepared. The theme of the faithful servant is coming ready or not. The theme of the parable of the ten virgins is too little, too late. Now, if as you have heard me present this parable, perhaps you've come to the understanding that you are not ready to meet Jesus when he comes. You're not ready because you've never turned to Jesus for salvation. We invite you to follow Jesus right now. Thank Jesus for dying for you and your place on the cross. Ask Jesus to forgive all your sins. Accept the payment that he made for you. Then ask Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. God wants you to be filled with his presence, his spirit living in you, guiding you and leading you. You just decided to follow Jesus. Write to me, and I'll share more information with you on how to grow as one of his followers. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.